All right, hey guys, uh, I'm going to make another video here uh, about crankshafts. Uh, I haven't made one for a while, uh, mainly because I suck at making videos. Uh, good with engines, not so good with the video stuff. Uh, but I want to talk a bit about big end bearing wear today, uh, and basically how to know where the crankshaft is in terms of wear and wear limit. Uh, I'm really only talking about one portion of it right uh, today. but. Uh, basically, the one thing I, I recommend uh, is uh, a, the, the dial gauge, simple dial gauge from eBay. Uh, this is graduated in half thousandths. Uh, I recommend the half thousandths as opposed to the one thousandth uh, that I'm using for the video. Uh, it, again, like eBay for 25 bucks or something like that, you know, it wasn't expensive. Uh, so uh, the other thing is V blocks. Uh, if you're in America, uh, I, I buy them from Grizzly. Uh, they're, they're, it's, it's mostly Chinese-made stuff. It is. Uh, you could spend a lot more on these things if you want. But even if you're building a few engines uh, a, a year, I highly recommend getting a dial gauge and v blocks because you know you can use these for tons of different things. Uh, you know, again, pretty cheap, easy to have. I normally use these. I'm using a vice today. Uh, just because that's probably what most people will be using. Uh, so, yeah, so basically I'm going to zoom in in a minute uh, and we'll, we'll talk about basically big end wear. Uh, I, again, I have, I have a bunch of different Lambretta cranks and one Suzuki crank, uh, and they're all in various states of wear, uh, which is why I decided I, be I better make the video while I have all these. Uh, some of them are getting put in engines uh, today and tomorrow. Other ones are getting pressed apart uh, to get milled down, service ground down. Uh, so I just happen to have all of the different, the whole range handy. So that's that's uh, going to make the video, and we'll hopefully we can learn something. All right. So we're zoomed in. Unfortunately, I can't get a real good zoom on on the dial. Uh, but basically, what I'm what this one is, this is a hundred thousandths as it runs around. So each each indication is. Like that's ten thousandths, twenty thousandths, thirty thousandths, forty thousandths. Uh, so again, if, if that's that's basically zeroed, that is ten thousandths. That's twenty, thirty, forty, and so on. Uh, so you will be able to see that stuff. So what I'm going to start out with, I'll make it quick. Uh, first is uh, Tamini crank, the black crank a lot of people use. Uh, this is a 107 rod, half mil uh, shims in it, uh, and this is brand new, right out of the box. So what I want to do, I have the vise set up so that way it's just sitting in. Uh, it's not down in or not too wiggly on top, but it'll stay. Uh, and basically what I'm going to do is I want to, I can turn this a little bit. So that way, basically I'm right at the end of the little end. And all I'm really doing today is just on about little end side shake, like how much it wiggles this way, which you'll be able to see in there. Uh, so what I'm going to do, and, and the nice thing about the vise this way is that it, it, I can do all the cranks just like this. Yeah, I, mean, I can just kind of adjust everything. So I'm just going to roll it back to where it is, uh, and I'm going to slide it in. I'm not even really worried much about zeroing it, but what I want to do is make sure that I'm not against, make sure the big end bearing is not against a wall, you know, where it might, you know, you basically want it in the middle, and I'm going to hold it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just push to one end to the other. Now, the other thing, now that's as far as I'm going to go, but I could flex it. So you don't really want to flex it. You just kind of want it to, you know, the, the goal is to get as much, to, to have both sides be even uh, when you do it. So a brand new Tamini crank, just, and, uh, and all, basically too, we're looking at an approximation. I mean, if, uh, if you want to get really serious with it, you certainly can. I'm just doing an approximate today. So what, what we're basically doing, that's actually at 50, that's at about 40. So when I'm doing 50, I'm a little over 20 thousandths, right out of the box, a little over 20. Uh, I think I was getting about 25 of that earlier. So I'm about 23, maybe 24, depending, you know. Uh, and it will wiggle, too. Like, as I slide it over, you know, sometimes it will go, it, it, the, the gauge itself will slide just because the, the rod itself is moving, you know, that way. Uh, but approximately about 25 thousandths is a new Tamini crank right out of the box. Uh, now you'll notice, I think, even at 25 thousandths out of the box, the, the rollers wiggle. So there is, 
you know, and feel, you can feel it, but that's not really easy to quantify, which I'll also explain later. Uh, now, this is a crank that I've got for, I also, this is a Yamaha rod with, uh, it's a Yamaha RD400 rod, it's a 115 rod. Uh, now, this is also, I haven't even oiled this yet. And you can hear how bad that sounds. Uh, now, once I oil it, I normally just soak it in oil so it's lubricated right out of the box. But yeah, I mean, it sounds terrible. It sounds like loose rollers. But when we put it on here, let's line it up now. So, yep, I'm good both ways. So we're looking at about, again, about 20, not even, because that's a little over, and that's a little over. Just about 20 thousandths, maybe a little over between 20 and 25 and again it's hard to see because it's yeah, I'm also trying to do it with the video so that's kind of a pain to do but yeah it's right around 20 thousandths a little over uh, depending on it as it wiggles that way so well that's about it's almost 25 there so 25 thousandths pretty good uh, now one of the things that happened to me was that when I built this crank see if you can see it uh, this is larger than I'm used to doing so, uh, it, it's actually got a 24 mil pin, tons of web. I mean, I had to, just to move this to, to true it, uh, I mean, I was wailing on the thing just to get it to, to true up. So, and, and when I did it, it just feels, it felt like too much. But again, this goes back to quantifying it. Like, just feeling it is, isn't always a good indicator. So, again, I can just set it up. Now, of course, if you're, if you're paying attention to the video, you also would realize, well, doesn't the length of the rod alter that? And you're 100% right. It's part of what I'm starting to show. It. You know, if you amplify it, make the, a, a real short rod, the same amount of play here. Can you see any of that? You can't. Uh, so the longer the rod, the, the, you know, the more measurement at the end you're going to uh, measure. So basically, so this felt bad. Uh, but we'll see, yeah, you still see it there, so we're at, let's see here, so we're at 20,000, so we're at there, and that's going from basically 10, so that's 10, 20, 30, and that's just about right, because that's why I was getting about 35,000. Now, the Graham Bell book, the, the blue tuning book, says that you'll get, I believe it's 35 to 40,000 side shake out of the box. Uh, and basically, to the maximum wear is 65 thousandths, but it's wise to replace that as soon as you hit 55. Uh, so this, right out of the box, 35 thousandths, just about dead on. You know, it, it's showing, they say it's just a little, maybe even, yeah, a little under. It, just right about 35 thousandths. So while it felt bad to me, I was worried that maybe, because I'm using a genuine Suzuki rod and pin, but I'm using a Pro-X uh, bearing, so I was starting to get worried. Like, ah, like is it the clearances or something wrong. Turns out I'm fine. Uh, now, so we go to where? Let's see which one. So this crank. Well, yeah, let's start here. So this came out of a running bike. This came out of my GP before I rebuilt it. It's just a GP crank. It was rebuilt by Vince at West Coast uh, years ago, maybe maybe 15 years ago. Now, one of the easiest tests you could have because this is terrible. Uh, is if it rubs the webs, I mean, you know, if, if you can, if you can clank between the webs, that is absolutely terrible. Um, the other thing by twisting, I mean, it twists, you know, I'm talking this way, not, you know, not even side shake. I mean, that's terrible, that, that, that the whole thing is twisting, it's a mess. Uh, it was running, but it would not have run for a whole lot longer that way. So again, let's let's pop it in there and see how it goes. There go this way. So now this, let's just measure. So now that's about zeroed. It's, yeah, just about zero. So that's a hundred. That's going right around once plus. Well, there it's going around a. That's about a. It's about a hundred and forty thousandths, which is insane. You shouldn't ever run that far. Uh, so again, that's going right around 100, 10, 20, 30, 40. Yep, right around 140 consistently. So 140 thousandths 
Uh, you should never come anywhere close to that. Uh, I was I was a lot younger, you know, not as much of an engine builder. I ran, I beat the crap out of that crank. So this is definitely getting rebuilt. Now, this is another crank. This is a good example of what you might run into. Uh, this uh, I, I bought this off of a friend of mine, Andreas, in New York. And we don't know how many miles. I didn't ask him how many miles, but that's very uh, common. I don't know how many miles he ran on it. You pull a box, you know, whatever. You buy a used crank, whatever. So you want to know where you're at. Again, set it up. Get it in the middle. Uh, so let's see. That's at 80 thousandths. So now that, and that's what I was running. I'm reading about because a full circle is 100, and I'm 20 shy of that. So again, that was in my test. That it's, uh, I'm reading about 80 thousandths. So again, by by Blair's or by uh, Bell's measurements, this would be out. This has got 80 thousandths. And and Andres did say I bought it for rebuild to put to do a Yamaha conversion on it. So this is 80 thousandths. Again, realistically, for a lower powered bike, you probably have some some wear, some time left on this. Uh, it, it, it's kind of up to you on how far you want to push it. Now this is this is again another. It's a black crank. It's been used. This I do know uh, has this crank has about 5,000 miles on it, uh, perhaps a little less. But this is what, uh, well, yeah. So this is about 5,000 miles. We installed it brand new. Notice the incorrect bearing on it. Uh, I've heard it said that you can run it that way. This does have 5,000 miles, but it's still incorrect because the only half the bearing runs on it. I mean, it's not correct. Uh, so. So again, we'll line this up, and then and this is at 5,000 miles. Let's see if I can get a good. Okay, so we're at 70 there. So now we're at 10, 20, 30, 40, 55. So now again, and you notice as the one side goes down, so does the other because I'm, I'm it's slightly off. So now that's running again 20. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that's about 55 after 5,000 miles. Especially if we're concluding that this first Tamini crank, if they were the same, unfortunately I did not measure this brand new, if it had 25 thousandths clearance out of the box, now it's got 55 thousandths after 5,000 miles. You know, that kind of tells us the approximate wear. Uh, I personally put the wear limits, uh, yeah, because I did all three cranks. Yep, we did the worst. We did... so. Uh, I personally put the wear limit at 55 thousandths. I think you'd be fine, especially if it's not a high-powered engine. Uh, you know, something, let's say, let's just make up a number, let's say under 15 horsepower. 55 thousandths clearance is probably, I'd say you could probably safely run this for two to 3,000 miles, maybe upwards of 5,000. Uh, now, the other, thing, oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is you could, in theory, I, I'm doing this on a vice, if you had... You could, in theory, test this uh, in the bike. Like, if, you, if you're tearing it, doing a top-end rebuild, you could, in theory, you know, sit it down on, on the crankcase face. And you could, in theory, you know, you, you'd need, because this is, again, this is magnetic. Uh, yeah, where are we at? Yeah, so this is magnetic. Uh, if you had some kind of, uh, you know, if you had some kind of, large piece of metal, like, a, I don't know, a tire rim for a car, uh, or, you know, a, an old barrel laying around, so something that you could clamp this to and set this basically under the bike, you could, you, because you can get to this, you know, the, the, of course, the, the whole engine's there, but you can stick that out and actually measure this even in the bike, uh, which is, which could be very beneficial if you're just doing a tear down, you want to see where the crank is, you can get a very good idea on how much wear you actually have there. But, the, and the other part I wanted to mention, you know, to, to really kind of mention is now when they're real bad, of course you can tell, you know, by, by how much wiggle. You, I can tell that that's terrible and should not be run. But once you start getting, you know, the Suzuki one, even after how many cranks I've rebuilt, it, you, you couldn't, I couldn't quite tell. I was a little worried about the side shake. So you really want to gauge, you want to be able to quantify it. So I say generally right out of the box, you're going to expect about 20 to 25 thousandths, which technically by, by uh, Bell's book 
is a little tight actually. Uh, so, you know, you, you're starting probably around 20 to 25 thousandths. I would replace it. I recommend replacing it at 55 thousandths, or at 50, I'm sorry, at 5,000 miles. Uh, now, this was, we had a friend of mine, he had the Yamaha rod in it. Uh, yeah, I, I guess you can't see that. He had the Yamaha rod in it, and, I mean, he's showing very little wear after 5,000 miles, but regardless, you know, I would say around 55 thousandths is about the max. So I think right where this is, uh, right where this crank is showing, uh, you know, that's probably about as far as I'd really like to go. Maybe 60 thousandths. Uh, anything over that to me is, is getting, you know, it, you're, you're getting a little, you know, uh, you're, you're approaching the end. So I, li I would say 55 to 60 thousandths on a Lambretta crank. Uh, you know, and uh, kind of go from there. You know, if if you expect to run it for a shorter amount of time, you know, like like just if you're at sixty five thousandths and you're going to run it for another two thousand miles light, you know, because that's all you got. Uh, you know, absolutely do it. At what point will it self destruct? It, it, it's it's impossible really to say, but I can tell you that at, even at one hundred and forty, it was running. But I I mean, that's your you're flirting with disaster there. I mean, there's no way that was going to last much longer. Uh, I'm surprised it made 140, uh, and it was on a low-powered engine, so that, that should be said, too. If that were a TS-1, it probably would not have survived at 140,000. Uh, so uh, hopefully that kind of gives us a little bit more uh, idea on where, you know, you got a bunch of cranks laying around. Are they any good? Uh, you know, the, the only other thing, actually, I suppose I will mention is I have, I just have an old tub of acetone to clear up if they're greasy, uh, and I won't do this with that but if I want to know because you know especially if it's got old oil in it what I often do is basically just I just douse it uh, just a hole in it uh, I, I will often just run it around you know run it around douse it get all the oil out of it so you can get the most because sometimes it'll uh, in fact even then that doesn't even sound that bad but it, it, it's, it's funny again the new one sounds worse than, than the old one. So uh, clean it out and, and get a proper measurement on it to see where you're at. Uh, I, I guess that's probably all I should uh, say there. So uh, hopefully that helps somebody there. All right, guys.